Okay, so before I present the next part, just one news item. I mean, we got a good news. Philip Burrell made it to here, so we said he was not going to come, but finally we, we covered him in the program. So his talk will replace the tutorial session, which we were going to do, which is at the we're taking place now. We were going to do maybe a third tutorial session, but then basically this will be if nobody disappeared during those two days, the second and final tutorial session on SwissProt. So the one on the program for Thursday is going to be replaced by Philip Starr. So, the so two persons which are going to give the tutorial and which are playing with the <laughs> balloons here are Bridget Buckman and Isabel Fan. So, they're from SwissProt Group at the Swiss Institute of Informatics. And Brigitte is a biologist by training. She started as a SwissProt annotator in 87, so she was one of the first ones. She was just after Rolf. And she became later head annotator, still at the MBL. Then she moved to Geneva. And she stopped working as an annotator and started working more as a developer and implementing a number of things inside your annotation platform, inside your editor, and then or sequence analysis platform at Annabelle. And now she had a third change of career from biologist to an uh, annotators to software developer to now researcher and trying to basically find ways to implement phylogenetics method into Swiss products. Isabel is a structural biologist who turned a computer scientist and she joined Swiss product at EBI in 99. She mo moved to Geneva in 2000. And uh, she works in software development unit, and she is, among other things, responsible for all of software and database development around the new taxonomy server. As GeoLinks, I mixed the place because they went both of them. So it's a mixture of uh, Brigitte and, uh, and uh, Isabel Heidelberg for Brigitte, Paris, Zurich, Oxford, and Inston for Isabel, and uh, Geneva for both Brigitte and Isabel, and of course the links to everyone in SwissProt Group at CBDBI. And last one, because I was, just before the start, because I was saying Brigitte was one of the first annotators, I mean, uh, she was just after Rolf at EBI in Geneva, the first one was Serenella. So we asked, I mean, Manuel Petsch took a picture yesterday at the beach club, where you have in one picture 77 women men years of work for SwissProt, with Serenella, Rolf, Brigitte and myself in the same picture. So I'll let them start with the tutorial. Thank you first for this kind introduction. Now you all know that what I'm going to talk about is absolutely not what I'm doing. But I managed to introduce a few slides which have to do with phylogeny. Um, if you have seen the... oh. I'm not speaking Spanish, uh, that one, but here, can you help me? These <laughs> people were using open office. Okay, thanks. So I'm talking about genome-oriented annotation programs. If you have seen uh, the posters outside, you see that SwissProt is having a lot of um, annota different annotation programs. And uh, you might think, uh, when we have so many programs now, where does it develop? Because all these uh, uh, groups uh, are alive, all these uh, entries which are created, uh, these data bank sections, and you might think that the whole thing could develop in, in different sections, it takes no development. And I would like to show you uh, um, what we are doing, how we are working together, how we are interacting just to give a slight idea from the side of these uh, genome-oriented annotation programs. When I was still uh, doing annotation a long time ago, we were annotating the entries just as they were dropping in. But uh, quite soon we were having some model organisms, organisms for which a lot of biological information was uh, available in all the different fields. And uh, 
what were model organism, organisms then uh, became own annotation programs. One of the most famous ones is uh, the HAMA project, which is covering bacteria and eukaryotic organelles and archaea. HAMA stands for High Quality Automated and Manual Annotation of Microbial Proteins. Um, at the end of uh, June in uh, this year, um, the project was covering 284 uh, bacteria, 26 archaea, and uh, 64 organelles. And uh, it will be more by now. There is a strong genome size variation uh, within most microbial taxa, which, and uh, the number of protein coding genes lies between 500 and 8,000 proteins. Many of these uh, proteins will probably never be characterized, so the annotators had to do a lot of copy and pasting uh, from well characterized protein entries to the less characterized protein entries. And um, we were Quite from the beginning, already having some model organisms, which included E. coli, Bacillus subtilis, and uh, also Staphylococcus aureus. And these uh, uh, genomes or proteomes are systematically annotated, and uh, the annotation is transferred uh, to other to the autologs of other proteomes. Um, quite soon, Amos had uh, the idea of. Uh, Autom uh, to automate this process based on annotation rules. And this is a rather uh, conservative uh, process and is very quality oriented. Uh, you might have seen uh, this poster outside. I'm showing here all the posters. And uh, if you have a, a detailed question, you can, uh, for all the, uh, these annotation projects, we have representatives here and you can discuss with them in detail. I can only give an overview here. PAP uh, um, stands for plant proteome, for the plant proteome annotation program. It uh, includes a manual annotation of uh, the two model organisms, Arabidopsis, which has about 26,000 gene, um, genes, and Orisa sativa with 30,000 genes. Uh, but uh, also um, the autologs from mice, wheat, soybean, and etc. Are, are annotated at the same time. A special emphasis is uh, given to plant-specific protein families. A specific task of uh, this program is the annotation of multi-gene families, getting uh, the gene names and the uh, protein names uh, right. Um, the chapter of fungi uh, is covered by FPUB, which stands for Fungal Proteome Annotation Program. Currently, this program covers 17 genomes from unicellular and higher fungi. Um, the range of the genome size is 5,000 to 12,000 uh, 12, protein coding genes, except for one which is much smaller. It has recently, recently been uh, moved into this fungi section. Um, the model organisms of this uh, program uh, is Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Schizosaccharomyces pom. And uh, again, uh, the fungal specific protein families are um, um, uh, handled with reference. Currently, uh, the automated uh, annotation procedure of HAMAP is tested for this. Uh, program and uh, rules have to be adapted to the specific needs um, of this program, such as uh, the adaptation of uh, the gene name conventions, no, the adaptation of the rules to the gene name conventions. Um, the, the first um, um, animal we are having here is uh, Xenoratitis elegans. It is a well-studied organism of about uh, 23,000 proteins with quite a lot of autologs to the human uh, organism. So um, it uh, possibly uh, can serve as uh, an organism for the study of human diseases. There are 11 other Xenoraptitis species in the Unipro database, and uh, another one which is quite often presented is uh, Xenoraptitis brexit. 
Drosophila is um, our representative or model organism for the insects. Um, there are, uh, it has about 17,000 proteins. It's again a well-studied organism, especially in genetics and developmental biology, and it's used for the, uh, a lot for the uh, study of defective genes. Um, the other Drosophila organism, which is the next three percent, is Pseudo obscura. Finally, um, HPI covered first, uh, first um, the mammalian uh, um, geno uh, proteomes, but uh, now uh, we are just extending two vertebrates. HPI stands for Human Proteomics Initiative, and it has been created when uh, it became obvious that the human proteome uh, it was available, and we wanted to give it a preference, that's clear. But at the same time, you get more information when you annotate uh, mammalian, uh, the, the corresponding autologs from, from other mammals. And uh, now when new uh, primate uh, uh, proteomes become available, we are annotating them at the same time, that's clear. Currently, we are testing going down to vertebrates because we have more experience now which type of information we can transfer so uh, step by step, we are enlarging uh, the uh, range of this project. It's clear that uh, in this category, um, uh, the protein diversity is uh, taking a lot of time during the annotation progress, uh, process. And uh, when I say protein diversity, I mean not only sequence variety, but also all the chemical modifications and the formation of protein complexes, because this all causes uh, structural changes, and with that, uh, the possibility proteins interact with each, with each other, which finally may, can cause a change in function. Just as an example, uh, the glucocorticoid receptor uh, the human, uh, this is um, a model of the uh, human glucocorticoid receptor gene. Um, we are having uh, uh, lots of different transcripts here and the corresponding uh, protein sequences. And uh, we know that the sequence can be modified in, in multiple ways. We are having alternative promoter usage in the end terminal, uh, which does not really join, change in this case. Uh, the end terminal of the protein, actually, the end terminal which is modified here in the protein is due to alternative uh, translation initiation. But uh, the sequence is modified through alternative splicing events, moduli exclusive exon usage, partial intron retention. And uh, I'm giving here an example. On the annotation, we are annotating these uh, sequences in the feature table with uh, the feature key uh, WASIC, and you can see here that uh, this position 451 is uh, uh, corresponds to this position, which which is additionally uh, added into the sequence. The next uh, uh, WASIC annotated corresponds, oops, sorry, um, corresponds to this region. And uh, finally, the last annotation to the uh, modularly exclusive um, exon usage. In each of these entries where we do have alternative splicing, we give uh, the keyword alternative splicing and we are annotating in the comment lines under the CC line topic alternative products, the event alternative splicing. We are giving. Um, ISO ID for each individual ISO forms. Sorry. And uh, the feature IDs, um, which are annotated in the feature um, uh, lines, are used uh, to uh, exactly um, uh, describe the ISO forms. A special um, emphasis, as I said, in HPI is uh, the protein diversity, and this really uh, makes automatic annotation difficult. Additionally, we are annotating uh, polymorphisms and disease mutations. Um, Xenopus is a vertebrate, and it uh, might now be covered 
also by HPI annotated at the same time. Xenopus is a special interesting organism because um, um, Xenopus ladies had, had, had a recent gene duplication, so a lot of uh, genes, uh, proteins, which you find in uh, Xenopus tropicalis, uh, you find two corresponding genes in ladies. And finally, the viruses. Um, um, we try to have uh, represented, there are a lot of viral genomes available, and we try to have model uh, organisms uh, nicely annotated in Swiss plot, uh, especially uh, um, viruses which are of interest for diseases and for economical reasons, uh, such as uh, HIV influenza virus, hepatitis C, uh, and so on. And finally, also uh, proxine uh, zirco viruses, which is one of the smallest viruses, and in contrast, the mimi virus, which has about 1,000 genes for immuno. A special task on this program is the taxonomy, which is really demanding, and there is a collaboration with the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses, and uh, a specific host virus protein interactions are annotated in the host um, um, uh, organism entries. The, uh, you can see now that uh, these uh, genome-oriented annotation projects are developing in parallel. And, uh, but a lot uh, of uh, the annotation is in common for all the different projects. And to ensure that, uh, uh, for example, uh, family annotation, domain annotation, the annotation of PTM, uh, protein protein interactions, 3D structure, enzyme metabolic pathways, and uh, all the controlled vocabularies. And we are having uh, all uh, annotation pro projects for all the different sections and they are closely interacting and making really a, a very strong network of uh, collaboration between the groups so that we are not having a divergent uh, evolution of the databases but really a network of, uh, um, of yeah, expertise. Thank you. I pass on to Isabel. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. We have ten, oh, we have ten minutes left, so I'm afraid I may have to use the Stephen Brenner technique and fight very, very fast. Ah. I'm, I'm removing this because a nice colleague of mine, Sandrine Pilbou, told me that uh, I would look like a corpse if I had this on, so I remove it. Right. Can you hear me here? Yeah? At this stage, I see people sitting back, especially people from the Uniprot consortium, because um, I've been to several Uniprot meetings, and usually when I'm called to speak, it's because I need to wake people up before the coffee break. But uh, this is a bit different. Uh, you had the coffee before, and I'm presenting something which I haven't done. It's the uh, work of many, many people, so I have to restrain myself with uh, bad jokes which just means that, uh, Rolf, you can relax, it's okay. So, annotation program pages on the web. Since I have a very short time to speak, I'll just tell you what you need to remember. Basically, uh, the annotation programs that uh, Brigitte presented uh, have their own program pages, at least some of them, and they're worth browsing, really, because you can learn a lot about SwissProt uh, annotation, and so, at first, it may seem like it's just some outlet for annotators to express their fondness for particular beasts, but there's more to it. So that's it, now we can sit back and uh, I'll try to entertain you. So here are the few program pages we already have for uh, the Human Proteomics in Initiative, HAMAP, and Plant Proteome Annotation Programs, and uh, TOTSPROT. So as I said, uh, when you just click on the first page, you can see it's an uh, outlet for annotators to really say that they like their beasts. Uh, this annotator obviously has bad dreams, but uh, <coughs> it's an example of um, a cross-species uh, annotation program, annotation of all toxins. Here's another example from the PAP, uh, plant annotation programs. 
uh, you can see it. Oops, sorry. The pictures here have been actually taken by one of the annotators. So they really, really like their plants. I mean, they photograph them, they draw them, and they also eat them. So Swiss pot is all about people. And here I would like perhaps to dispel some preconceived ideas of who the annotators are. This is a Swiss pot group in Geneva, pretty enormous. So it could be quite daunting at first to try and get to know everybody. So the annotators on the annotation programs have set up some who's who pages. And uh, so you can learn, for example, that uh, Emmanuel is a, oops, very happy annotator. Uh, that Damien actually went as far as, oh no, as Japan to do his postdoc. Oh, this is really tedious. Um, so they're really, really experts. Uh, I want to stress this because uh, they don't get uh, to talk like me and, and, and be a clown. So I mean, uh, you should really get to know them since they're here uh, and they're very approachable. The other thing I would like to dispel is that uh, Swissport had a reputation for uh, employing really a lot of female annotators. But if you look at this page very, very carefully, you can see that Michelle is spelled with one L, also obviously uh, not a woman. Ah, and here, it's just to illustrate that uh, annotation is not only done uh, in Swissport Geneva, but also at the EBI. And there's here Michelle McGlain and uh, Eleanor Whitfield, who uh, can confirm this. And there's a group of annotators in Brazil. And only, only Brazilian can make uh, microbes look sexy. I mean, this is the page for the HAMAP, manual annotation of microbial proteins. And they even have uh, Sexified Swiss port logo. So the pages really are there to provide essentially access to specialized data sets. Like, for example, here, if you wish to download all manually annotated proteins from Arabitopsis Italiana, you just have one click to go, so it's uh, easy, painless, and uh, no need to do uh, any painful searches and what you get back is this uh, update, I mean, uh, no-nonsense information packed, a bug-free flat file, which you can download very easily. But what I want to talk about is uh, how you can use, actually, these pages to get familiar with SwissPort annotation. It's just an alternative uh, way to get to know SwissPort. And I think this is for your own interest, really, because uh, if you know the database, you can make more efficient use of it. And then uh, you can prepare for your post-retirement activities, of course, for the Great Grain Matter uh, Adopter Protein Scheme. So here, for example, is the links to the SwissPod documents. So uh, people who know and have read the SwissPod user manual, or the Unipod, should say, user manual, should know about these. So who has read the SwissPod Unipod user manual. Ah, you Rolf, you should raise your hand. <laughs> anyway, there are 90 plus documents, specialized documents, uh, and that are linked from the manual. And here you have a, a selection of these. So, for example, you have the link to the human proteins with sequence variants, and uh, you get the information packed up to date but free no-nonsense flat file. So you can learn also about annotation uh, through publications and tutorials that we have put on these pages. For example, the one that was um, written about protein variety in eukaryotes. And uh, there's a direct link to uh, annotation examples. So here you can on not only see what kind of annotation we provide, but how uh, these annotations are uh, are presented in the entries themselves. So a great way to learn about how annotation is done in SwissPod. Then we have statistics pages. Usually statistics pages are there to um, 
impress the users and depress the annotator because they can see a long way to go here. So uh, somebody was talking about uh, 20,000 uh, human entries and uh, that we should pop up the champagne when we reach that number. So uh, we can place bets every other week when we release these statistics. Then we have links to the manual if you want to know the different annotations that we have, so the manual annotations that we provide. So for example, if you know, want to know what, how variants are annotated, that's where you click. So I haven't used uh, the link to put post-translation modifications because uh, John Garrel barely is here and uh, he would probably scream if I say something silly. Then if you want to know in an entry what, how variants are, what variants look like, you can see here that that for each category of annotation, for every kind of annotation, we linked to the entry which has the maximum, uh, largest number of this kind of annotation. For in this particular example, the link here, 252, indicate that we have 252 variants in that particular entry. So we really can't miss it. So here's uh, the page that uh, you get. This is the entry for hemoglobin, unsurprisingly. And then from there on, you can click on one of the variants and go to the variant page where we uh, provide models if it's available. And SwissPort is great because it not only uh, allows you to do uh, science, but also good science because we tell you if things are uncertain. So for example, for models, it would tell you uh, that uh, you have to use it with uh, great caution. I should finish now with uh, HAMAP because this is where you can actually do real analysis. And uh, it's also for, for Antoine Donchin that uh, SwissPod doesn't uh, neglect microbes. So HAMAP stands uh, uh, for a complicated uh, <coughs> acronym, but basically HAMAP does not automatic annotation of proteins belonging to specified families for bacteria and archaea protein sequences. Basically complete proteomes for microbes. And the way it works is that it annotates through families. If you want to know everything about HAMAP families, uh, there's a description, but you can also browse them. So the families are used to propagate annotation across sequences that have been aligned. So this is also a great way of seeing what kind of annotations we do. So you can not only read the family, but you can actually scan your whole complete set of uh, sequences against HAMAP families, so you can annotate your own sequences. I probably see Elizabeth will complete it, because it will run on our server. So if you have a complete set of sequences, it may take three days to get annotation. Ah, I'm finished already, okay. But uh, it's worth uh, trying this. So to finish, uh, these pages are there so that uh, like-minded hosts can uh, exchange uh, ideas with and uh, suggestions with, um, with the annotators in the particular field. Uh, we really, really welcome feedback. Then there's a progress indicator that, so that you can see how far we're going with the manual annotation. And there's a lot of service that we're trying to develop uh, very soon. So uh, please, please go to these pages uh, and uh, use them. <laughs>